We just had some massive updates revealed to us when it comes to the next update for Halo Infinite, which would be called Season 6, now titled Content Update 29. S343 seems to be shifting away from the seasonal model to a more operational model. So you know how within Season 5 you had the main battle pass, right, that was worth 50 tiers, and you had the two operations that were each one were worth 20 tiers, with a premium option as like a, something extra you've wanted to buy into. Well, it seems like 343 is going away with the main season battle pass and going with these operations as the pass model. And for content 29, which would be season six will be receiving three operations within that period and on january 30th the first operation will be the spirit of fire operation which comes with the ce assault rifle as a premium option to buy into yes i know it sucks having been tied behind a paywall but you also get the mark 4 armor core the armor core that jerome uses the halo wars armor core will be free at launch with this update then once the spirit of fire operation passes then you'll have the cyber showdown 3 event come back with that as an operation another 20 tiers are grind through and then after that one you have the yappening 2 which will be returning and giving you another 20 tiers similar kind of thing of like basically giving you a full armor set with a few coatings mixed in with it one very important thing that chat and i noticed when it came to the live stream of this event was that you will not be able to earn credits within the operation passes and the lack of a season pass means there will be no way for you to earn credits through playing the game so it'll be very interesting to see if you go away from the seasonal main battle pass model and just stick to the operation model which seems to be the case will there be a way for you to unlock credits through gameplay that wasn't addressed within this information on the live stream i'm sure we'll hear more about it moving forward if you guys like these informational videos make sure to tap like and if so if you want to stay update everything going on with halo make sure to tap subscribe and Let's get right into those details. They also showcase the new map Illusion coming into Halo Infinite, which looks to be a great social map, 4v4 map to come in for everybody. And the really cool, unique aspect about this map is there one long hallway down the middle, but inside that hallway, you turn invisible. Now, once in the hallway, it still acts like a normal camo would. If you shoot, jump, or do anything that would make you go on camo when it comes to your regular power-up, that happens within the hallway as well. But if you're in the hallway, saying just normally walking around, crouch walking, not shooting, you're permanently camouflaged within that hallway. I think this is gonna be a really fun addition to like the social aspect of Halo Infinite to make it so that you have much more unique maps that kind of stand up and be like, oh yeah, that's the camo map. That was a big issue with Infinite at launch that all the maps had to be designed for social and competitive in mind because that's all they had at the time. And that's why a lot of the maps at launch felt very sweaty, uninspired and kind of boring because they had to be designed for competitive in mind as well. Now that we have enough content within the game, 343 has the ability to put in maps like Illusion, which definitely would not be a ranked map, but be perfect for the social experience. We had the reveal of three Forge palettes within this update. The one that's coming in with Content Update 29, it's gonna be where it's getting used to that terminology, is gonna be the Covenant palette coming into Halo Infinite that was showcased live on the stream. And it's gonna be amazing. I mean, it's gonna be making people who wanna make covenant style map have the ability to use like the true assets of that. Now I've seen plenty of forgers out there try to recreate that covenant feel with their maps. We've seen Unique make a basically a one-to-one -one recreation of Mischief, which was an amazing job. We also have like this crazy alien biome being added into Halo Infinite. And on top of that, the one I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to, a Forge palette is coming in later within this year. So with that crazy alien biome, you'll also be able to change the color of different textures of environmental objects like trees and flowers and vines and things like that. I'm just saying, when's, when are we going to get an avatar map? That's happening soon, right? Coming on January 30th for Content Update 29, we'll also will be receiving cross-core shoulders on top of this, so then you'll be able to add more customization, so hopefully your fracture cores will have a little more functionality to them. While on the topic of customization, we do have the Halo TV show coming around here on February 8th, right? Well, we actually will be able to unlock the helmets that are within the Halo show, so Kai, Riz, and Vanek's helmet will be available to unlock, I believe they mentioned through weekly Ultimate Challenge. Challenges. Those helmets look sick in-game, absolutely worth the grind for. But talking about other timed customization that's been in Halo Infinite that people have not been able to enjoy, either they were content locked by a promotion, region locked by some kind of reason, those will now be coming into Halo Infinite as well. But they mentioned within the live stream that they'll be utilizing like a MCC Spartan Point system when it comes to being able to unlock these. How will you receive your Spartan points? 
what's the current earn rate of those wasn't really dived into i'm sure we'll know more about that as we get closer to the release of that we do have a blog coming about the content update 29 coming here pretty soon so i'll definitely cover that blog when it does go live so things like that monster coding that came before the launch of halo infinite uh that oreo coding that came for the spartans the, the nail polish coding things like that you'll be able to unlock in the game before they also briefly touched on the new networking model that's gonna be coming eventually into halo infinite union Shack did mention that some of the fixes that people requested when it comes to this this new networking model have already been implemented with the current internal build that they have but still have some more things to change and they are currently cooking at the moment when it comes to this new networking model being implemented in they did see overall feedback was that it was very positive and people enjoyed it but there are aspects that need to be fixed before completely rotating to this new networking model i talked about this in a previous video as well so while no date specifically was given for this networking model being implemented into halo infinite i do have a feeling it will come in the first half of 2024 as basically this is going to be the halo 5 networking model but then put in the Halo Infinite. Next, we have some great information about HCS stuff. I'm really excited about this, especially when it comes to HCS events. If you've never been to a Halo event, guys, please do it. Especially, well, it seems like Infinite might be winding down a little bit. We'll talk about that later in this video. They showcase the Season 1 bundles returning in Halo Infinite, so you'll be able to buy those first original ones with Content Update 29. Also with this new update, you have multi-core coatings and multi-weapon coatings as well. And you'll be able to customize your armor kits because previously you could only have that coating for say the pistol or just the battle rifle. And some coatings would only work on the armor kit itself. So like the season one bundles, now you'll be able to have full customization options for your armor kits of the HDS bundles, which I had just at least picking up one. They do help support the Halo Pro scene. They help the organizations as well, help support those. And plus they just look awesome. They also mentioned with the new bundle coming in with the Content 29 update, that we having a new Dracon style weapon model coming in. This is the first one of three that are gonna be showcased throughout the year that we're gonna be receiving. This one's based off of the Demon Award where it's a bandit rifle that looks like a dragon. It's freaking awesome. Tashi did mention that there are two more weapon models coming in through the HCS bundles, one based off of the Grim Reaper medal and one based off of the Extermination medal. The first event happening over in Optics Arlington event over at March 15th. Tickets are on sale right now if you guys want to jump in and play that. They're also going to be a London Major, which is fantastic. Glad to see the EU people finally getting some love. We also have a phase event over on the East Coast of the US over in Atlanta, Georgia. So the East Coast people get to have some love there. You also have the Salt Lake City returning with Space Station having their own major event. And then finally, the finals ending up in Seattle. Once again, October 4th through the 6th, I will 100% be there. Again, if you have not been to these events, man, definitely make it out. They're so much fun. And the last section I want to talk about is Halo Infinite in 2024. We actually got some information on what's going to be coming out very soon with Halo Infinite and also later down the road this year. Not exactly a roadmap as it didn't tie to any dates, but basically we got a roadmap for Halo Infinite in 2024. One of those being a BTB refresh, which will bring at least three new maps. They showcase the maps of Thunderhead, Insolence, and Obituary. These are Forge maps being made in BTB. I'm sure they've been in the works for a long time because BTB maps, they did mention within the stream that they take longer to vet, create, and also put in, into the game. That's the reason why you see so many more 4v4 Forge maps being implemented into the game, where BTB is not getting the same amount of love because it takes so much more time and testing before you can implement a BTB map into matchmaking. But glad it's getting an update. Firefight King of the Hill will also be receiving a refresh. They did mention about community maps coming in the King of the Hill as well. So hopefully get some more dedicated maps for Firefight, which I think is absolutely needed for that playlist. Still really fun. Glad it's out there right now, but could use a little more uh, unique map experiences for sure. We will also have some refreshes coming for Husky Raid as well as Squad Battles. A lot of you classic BTP fans, including myself, would be very excited about this. We've seen some leaks about Relic coming into the game in some capacity, that classic Halo 2 map. That could possibly be a Forge map being implemented into the Squad Battles refresh that'll be coming in sometime in 2024. 343 also mentioned about more unique playlists coming into the rotation of Halo Infinite. You know, Team Snipers is fun, but it really should just be a permanent mode. And it's not really that exciting when you bring like, hey, Team Snipers is in the game. Like, cool, but it's going to be gone in a couple weeks, so I don't really care. But if we have more unique experience, like we had like that Tiny Slayer playlist, the yapping kind of stuff, like that's something that's fun, worth jumping in and playing. Uh, talking about rotation and things like that, the Match Composer was also talked about again coming into Halo Infinite. They mentioned a Match Composer-esque 
type of system as what uh, Sketch specifically said. So I don't know if we'll get specifically the same thing from the Master Chief Collection, but something very close to it. It did mention being able to select like player accounts that you want to play in and then the mode that you want to select, which sounds very similar to the Master Chief Collection in my opinion. Uh, but they mentioned that the, having the Match Composer allows having more rotational playlists, like say Team Snipers be more evergreen and be an option for people to select and play, which is what the Match Composer does such a great job of, is allowing players to select the experience that they want and have it so tailored, especially since if you're gonna add more playlists, that list is getting long already. To add more to it, you just have to scroll down so long, you actually probably miss what you're looking for. On the ranked side of things, we'll have ranked Slayer and ranked Doubles being permanent modes once the Match Composer does get implemented into Halo Infinite. 343 also did mention that ranked Arena will maintain being in there the whole time, but also have a rotational playlist. So you'll, you'll ultimately have four options to play ranked Halo in any type of experience. But they mentioned like the rotational ones would be more like ranked Team Snipers, probably like ranked Tactical Slayer, things like that. And lastly, to look forward to in 2024 for Halo Infinite is easy anti-cheat coming into the game, which is fantastic. Uh, apparently there's like the Arbiter system that's in the game already to catch cheaters, but apparently the easy anti-cheat, they're probably just switching over to that. Maybe just because if they're looking to kind of get away from the slip space engine, according to leaks, rumors that we've heard about the Unreal Engine switch or doing something else with the engines of Halo Halo, using an easy anti cheat would just be an easy way to get data on that and then maybe switch over to whatever the next experience is going to be, which they did mention multiple times within this live stream about having the next big Halo project coming along the way. When it comes to easy anti-cheat, I'm like, I'm sure, sounds good. I haven't really experienced any cheaters. Uh, I haven't really seen any clips about cheaters when that yeah, it was rampant when the game first came out, right? Uh, but after that, like I've only really I haven't really seen anything actually when it comes to cheating and I have a pretty close ear to the ground when it comes to news and info stuff happening with Halo. Like I don't see any clips on Twitter. I don't see Reddit, Facebook or wherever you can post things, YouTube. I don't see anything like that happening on YouTube showcasing cheaters. So that could just be the lack of population and people wanting to cheat in Halo or maybe people just kind of downplay it so then it doesn't get widespread. Either way, easy anti-cheat. We know it works. Looking forward to it. Now I kind of want to talk about the big elephant that's in the room right now, right? We all had impressions that this was going to be titled Season 6, right? And they specifically avoided that wording. A lot of times, actually, they even clarified it as well within the live stream because they're calling this Content Update 29. And the reason why they mentioned that they want to switch to this terminology is because they wanted to match like the Master Chief Collection model, right? where MCC went through its seasons, right? Updating the game on PC for each new game, which was fantastic. Introduced a new season, basically, worth the seasonal update. But once all the games came in, they went to a more of a content update model where whenever they had something to update the game with, that's when they would push it as a big update. So when I hear that Halo Infinite switching from a seasonal model to content update model, I think it's more than just terminology. I have a feeling that this is gonna be another step towards the ramping down of the production for Halo Infinite. As not calling it a season and calling it a content update doesn't really necessarily mean it has to tie them down to that three to four month cadence that was promised before the release of Halo Infinite and that we've been experiencing with Halo since the release of season three through season five. The biggest problem 343 has been experiencing throughout the entirety of Halo Infinite's live service, even now, is just getting the content out for people to play, to keep people satiated. Sean Barron, who was on the live stream previously, talked about the getting to that 90%, 80% level where like it's just good enough to get it out the door so people can just jump in and play. I think the best obvious example of this was when Firefight was implemented into the game, right? Even though it works, it plays great. We got a new map of the House of Reckoning, but it's reused assets from the campaign that they blocked off and mapped out the AI pathing so then it could work within that area for a Firefight map. It did a, they did a great job with it, it's fantastic. But then to fill out the playlist, they just grabbed a lot of the Forge maps and dev maps that are already in the game and just added Firefight to them, which gives them a whole new experience. It's still fun to play. Like Live Fire is really fun to play and Firefight because it's so condensed and it's a real challenge. You get some BTB maps mixed in there as well. But I was kind of hoping for like a unique experience, right? Like we've traditionally have had unique maps for Firefight. And I think that's going to be coming with an update or a refresh with King of the Hill 
firefight very soon. But the launch of that was saying like they just got the game mode up, they got that section from the campaign working, and just worked out the pathing for existing levels. And so they reached like that 80% level you would kind of hope for a update for new maps, modes, and things like that to just get out the door for people to play. So going with content update makes me feel that they're not tying themselves down to that three to four month cadence for a major update release and more saving them from when they have time to do it. Now I'm sure they're gonna try to aim for that three to four month update cycle, but it might reach beyond that to maybe even six months or something like that. But I have a feeling this is terminology change is mainly tied to the end date of Halo Infinite's live service. It's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. Sketch even talked about this earlier, right? Back in December, I covered it on the channel here, saying that 343 has ambitions beyond Halo Infinite, right? While Halo Infinite's great, the team wants to do something else, right? And you can't have the whole team working on Halo Infinite's live service if you're trying to make another game or some new experience. And previously that we covered here on the channel, the next untitled Halo experience has been in the work since 2022. And Halo Infinite has been slowly ramping down its live service components, right? We first heard about this back in January of 23 with the major layoffs that 343 was hit by, mainly hitting the campaign teams, the animators, and things like that. Which meant no campaign DLC happening for Halo Infinite, even though that was certainly planned. The next big hit we had when it came to the ramping down of the live service of Halo Infinite was that there were going to be no more narrative cutscenes for each new season. And now we're hit with this news that they're changing the terminology from season to content update and mimicking the Master Chief Collection style of updates makes me just kind of feel like things are slowly winding down for the Halo Infinite live service because we know it's not lasting to 10 years. 343 didn't say this outright, but confirmed it. Though I do expect to still see a full list of content coming to Halo Infinite throughout this year of 2024. The big question is, what is Halo Infinite going to be like in 2025, especially June 2025, as that's the fiscal year rollover for Microsoft. So if Microsoft was to end the live service of Halo Infinite, it would be June of whatever year it would be. That would be the last month we'd see some true content being added in. And changing this terminology, I know it might be just me being a doomer right here, but I feel like that might be the end date of Halo of its live service being June of 2025. But of course, that's pure speculation on my end, but that's just how I feel about when I hear this information. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. But I also talked more about what to expect for 2024 for Halo Infinite with BBK Dragoon, a prominent YouTuber, here on the new podcast that we're starting up on the channel here. And don't worry, I have things timestamped in there if you guys want to check out specific parts. So thank you all for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.